The Cairo sun was setting, painting the city in hues of gold and crimson. Aisha, her wavy brown hair tied back in a casual bun, sat on the floor of their modest living room, helping Tariq with a puzzle. Sammy, with his rugged good looks, was in the kitchen trying his hand at a new recipe he had learned. Mama, where does this piece go? Tariq's innocent eyes sought guidance. Aisha leaned in, pointing to the matching spot. Right there, Habibi. Just then, the scent of something burning wafted from the kitchen. Sammy, Aisha called out, laughing. Are you setting the kitchen on fire? Sammy peeked out, a sheepish grin on his face. Just a minor mishap. Dinner is almost ready. Tariq giggled. Baba is a funny cook. As the trio enjoyed their imperfect but hearty meal, the doorbell rang. Aisha's face turned serious, recognizing the timing of the visitor. Opening the door revealed Farid, looking every bit the corporate executive in his pristine suit, contrasting starkly with the humble setting of Sammy and Aisha's home. Good evening, he said curtly. Sammy stood, wiping his hands on a napkin. Farid, he nodded, the tension palpable. Aisha exhaled deeply. Father, what brings you here? Ignoring Sammy completely, Farid addressed Aisha. We need to talk. Tariq, sensing the mood, whispered, Is Grandpa angry, Mama? Aisha gently stroked his hair. Go play in your room for a bit, okay? Once Tariq was out of earshot, Farid began, Aisha, I've told you before. This, he gestured vaguely around the humble home, isn't the life you were meant for. Sammy's jaw tightened, but he remained silent, knowing Aisha could handle her father. Aisha crossed her arms. We're happy, Father. That's what matters. Farid scoffed. Happiness doesn't pay bills. Yasser inquired about you again. He's willing to give you a good life. The life you deserve. Aisha's eyes widened in disbelief. You want me to leave Sammy and marry your boss? For what? Your promotion? Farid's face reddened. It's not just about the promotion. It's about securing a future for you and Tariq. Sammy stepped forward. Aisha is my wife, Farid. We don't need anything from you or Yasser. Farid's eyes darted scornfully at Sammy. You? What can you provide? Look at this place. She deserves better. Aisha's voice trembled with rage. My place is with Sammy and Tariq. We love each other. You can't put a price on that. Think about Tariq's future. Farid tried a softer approach. Yasser can give him opportunities you can't even dream of. Sammy clenched his fists, struggling to hold back. She said no, Farid. Leave. Aisha placed a hand on Sammy's arm, calming him. Father, I respect you, but my life is here, with my family. Please try to understand. Farid looked between the two, his face a mask of frustration. This isn't over, he warned, before storming out. The weight of his visit hung in the air. Sammy enveloped Aisha in a comforting embrace. It's going to be okay, he whispered. Aisha nodded, holding on to him tightly. I just wish he'd understand. Aisha paced in her small living room clutching the phone tightly. The call she'd just received from her father still echoing in her ears. He'd threatened to divorce her mother, Amira, if Aisha didn't leave Sammy and marry Yasser. He can't do this, Aisha whispered to herself, her face a turmoil of emotion. The door opened, revealing a careworn Amira, her eyes red-rimmed from crying. Aisha, she began, her voice trembling. He's serious. He's preparing the papers. Aisha ran to her mother, wrapping her in a tight embrace. I'm so sorry, Mama. I never thought he'd go this far. Amira sighed deeply. It's not your fault. Your father, he's changed the promise of wealth and prestige. It's all he sees now. Aisha felt her heartstrings tug. But Mama, what about you? How can he just throw you out after all these years? Amira's face crumpled. I never thought I'd see the day when he'd choose ambition over family. The two sat in somber silence, the weight of Farid's decision pressing down on them. Amira finally spoke up. Maybe, maybe it's best if you consider his proposal. Aisha's head snapped up. How can you say that, Mama? Amira took her daughter's hands in hers. I just don't want you or Tariq to suffer. If marrying Yasser can give you security, maybe it's a sacrifice worth making. Aisha shook her head vehemently. I love Sammy, Mama. We'll find a way. Before they could continue, a panicked knock sounded on the door. Aisha opened it to find Sammy, face pale, 
carrying an unconscious Tariq in his arms. Aisha's heart plummeted. What happened? Sammy's voice broke as he spoke. He just collapsed at the park. The couple rushed to the hospital. Tests were run, and after what felt like an eternity, a grim-faced doctor approached them. I'm afraid Tariq has a severe cardiac condition. He needs surgery immediately, he said. Sammy's voice quivered. How much will it cost? The doctor hesitated. It's an expensive procedure. Aisha clutched the doctor's arm. Please, he's our only son. The doctor looked sympathetic. I understand, but there's not much we can do without the funds. Aisha and Sammy sat in the dimly lit hospital corridor, their world crumbling. They didn't have the money and time was running out for Tariq. Sammy finally broke the silence. We'll find a way, Aisha. We have to. But Aisha's thoughts were on Farid. She remembered his offer to finance Tariq's treatment if she agreed to his proposition. The dilemma gnawed at her. Her son's life versus her marriage. She looked at Sammy, tears streaming down her face. What if there's no other way? Sammy, sensing her internal conflict, took her face in his hands. Aisha, whatever decision you make, I'll support you. All that matters is Tariq. Aisha felt torn, loyalty to Sammy, concern for her mother, and now, the life of her son hung in the balance. The scales of her life seemed impossible to weigh. The sterile scent of the hospital hallway was stifling as Aisha sat, cradling her head in her hands. Sammy, looking worn out and exhausted, sat next to her, occasionally glancing at the closed door that held their world. Their son, Tariq. The silence was broken by the sound of footsteps. It was Farid, walking with a sense of purpose and authority, the familiar glint of ambition shining in his eyes. Aisha, Farid began, his voice smooth. I heard about Tariq. Aisha, barely looking up, responded with a touch of bitterness. Only now? Or when you saw another chance to push your agenda? Farid took a deep breath, feigning concern. This isn't the time for accusations. I'm here to help. Sammy's gaze sharpened. And what's the price this time, Farid? Ignoring Sammy, Farid addressed Aisha. I'll pay for Tariq's treatment, every cent. But you know what I want in return. Sammy stood up, fury evident. You cannot be serious. Using your grandson's health as a bargaining chip? Aisha, tears streaming down, whispered. Is there no limit to your ambitions, father? Farid looked momentarily taken aback, but recovered quickly. It's for the best, Aisha. You marry Yasser, and not only will Tariq be saved, but your future will be secure. Think about it. Aisha felt a rush of anger. So, I just discard Sammy like he means nothing. Farid's face hardened. Sometimes we have to make difficult choices for the greater good. The room was thick with tension. Sammy's hand found Aisha's, squeezing it reassuringly. Whatever you decide, Aisha, I'm with you. Aisha took a deep, shaky breath her voice barely audible. Okay, father, I'll do it, but only for Tariq. A relieved smile crossed Farid's face. Good, you're making the right decision. The next few weeks were a whirlwind. The divorce papers were signed, and Aisha found herself thrust into a lavish engagement ceremony with Yasser. The luxurious surroundings, a stark contrast to her simple life with Sammy, felt suffocating. At the engagement, Yasser, dressed impeccably in a designer suit, leaned over to whisper in her ear, You look stunning, my dear. Aisha forced a smile. Thank you, Yasser. His eyes scanned the room, calculating. This union will be beneficial for both of us. You bring youth and beauty, and I provide the stability and wealth. Aisha, feeling more like a commodity than a person, responded coolly, And what of love? Affection. Yasser chuckled, a hint of mockery in his tone. Love is for fairy tales, my dear. We live in the real world. As the days turned into weeks, Aisha felt the weight of her sacrifice daily. Yasser, always surrounded by business associates and socialites, had little time or inclination for her. She often felt like an ornament, displayed for the world but rarely appreciated. During a dinner party at their mansion, Yasser introduced Aisha to a group of businessmen. Gentlemen, meet my beautiful wife, Aisha. One of the men, looking Aisha up and down, commented, Yasser, you always had an eye for the finer things. Yasser laughed heartily, his arm possessively around Aisha. Indeed, and she's the finest of them all. Aisha forced a smile, her insides churning. The glitz and glamour, 
The fake smiles and the shallowness of it all weighed heavily on her. She yearned for the genuine laughter and love she shared with Sammy and Tariq. But every time she felt the pull of despair, she reminded herself of the reason behind it all. Her son, Tariq. He was recovering, and that was all that mattered. Her sacrifice, she told herself, was worth it. The grand living room of Yasser's estate was echoing with the murmurs of well-dressed guests, whispering behind their wine glasses. Rumors about Yasser's sudden demise swirled in the air, mixing fact with fiction. Rania, Yasser's longtime business associate, approached Aisha. I just can't believe he's gone, she said, a faux pout on her heavily made-up lips. One moment he was alive and well, and the next, that terrible accident. You never know, do you? Aisha nodded, her face betraying nothing of the whirlwind of emotions inside her. Life is unpredictable, she replied softly. Farid, ever the opportunist, entered the room, his eyes scanning for Aisha. Spotting her, he moved closer. My dear, he began feigning concern. How are you holding up? Aisha met his gaze coldly. I'm managing, thank you. An awkward silence hung between them. Farid cleared his throat. I heard the will reading is today. If you need any support, any advice, you know you can count on me. Aisha raised an eyebrow, a hint of sarcasm in her tone. Thank you for your... Concern, father. The lawyer, Mr. Ahmed, gestured for everyone to gather around. The room hushed in anticipation. Clearing his throat, Mr. Ahmed began, We are here to read the last will and testament of Mr. Yasser Al-Fayed. As he read through the legal jargon, Aisha's heart raced. She expected to be mentioned, perhaps given a small part of the estate. But nothing prepared her for what came next. And to my beloved wife, Aisha, I leave all my assets, properties, and holdings, making her the sole heir and beneficiary. A collective gasp filled the room. The enormity of Yasser's wealth was well known, and Aisha was now one of the most affluent women in the region. Farid, always looking for an angle, was quick to act. Aisha, he whispered, trying to mask his excitement. This is unexpected. We should discuss how best to manage these assets. Aisha, a defiant spark in her eyes, replied, I think I can handle it, father. Days turned into weeks, and Aisha found herself navigating her newfound wealth. While many approached her with investment ideas and business ventures, Aisha remained guarded, especially around Farid. One evening, while Aisha was overseeing some renovations at the estate, Farid dropped by unannounced. Aisha, he began, a hint of desperation in his tone. We're family. Let's work together. I have many business contacts, experience. We could grow this wealth exponentially. Aisha took a moment, her gaze piercing. After all you've done, after everything you put me through, you expect me to trust you? Farid's face reddened. I was only thinking of your best interests, of our family's legacy. Aisha laughed bitterly. My best interests, or yours? You traded me for ambition, and now that I have something you want, you come crawling back. Farid looked defeated. Aisha, I... She cut him off. Save it, father. From now on, I'm taking control of my life, my wealth. Stay out of it. As Farid left the estate, the weight of his decisions and actions pressing heavily on him, Aisha watched him go, her resentment clear. She had won her freedom, and she was determined to keep it. Aisha's efforts in establishing the hospital were swift and well executed. It became a symbol of hope for many, named after Tariq as a testament to his resilience. At a fundraising event for the hospital, Aisha crossed paths with Sammy. She noticed his name as a sponsor on one of the event's banners. Sammy, approaching her, started hesitantly. Aisha, it's been a while. She looked at him, a mix of emotions swirling in her eyes. Sammy, I didn't expect to see you here. He smiled weakly. I've started a few successful ventures. When I heard about the hospital, I wanted to contribute. Aisha raised an eyebrow, curious. Your ventures seem to be doing really well. Sammy, with a chuckle, replied, Yes, I've had some unexpected luck in the business world. Their conversation continued, and the chemistry between them was palpable. Old feelings started to resurface. One day, while overseeing the hospital's operations, Aisha received an anonymous note. Her heart raced as she read the familiar handwriting. Be careful of Farid. He's plotting against you. Her thoughts raced. Who could have sent this? And what could Farid possibly be planning now? She decided to confront him, 
wanting answers. At Farid's opulent home, she wasted no time. What are you planning, father? What's this I hear about your plots against me? Farid looked taken aback, but quickly composed himself. Aisha, I don't know what you're talking about. Aisha slammed the note on the table. This. Explain. Farid, feigning innocence, said, I've no idea who wrote that, but I'd never harm my own daughter. Aisha, eyes narrowing, replied, Like you've never harmed me before? Selling me off for your own gain? Farid, voice rising in anger, retorted, I did what I thought was best. Aisha, voice cold as ice, said, Stay away from me, Tariq, and my mother. I won't hesitate to use my resources against you if you threaten us. As weeks passed, Sammy's ventures thrived even more. He finally discovered the silent investor aiding his success, Aisha. Overwhelmed by the realization, he approached her. Why, Aisha? After everything, she looked away. It was the least I could do. For Tariq, for you, for us. Sammy, eyes glistening, pulled her into a tight embrace. I never stopped loving you. Aisha whispered back, and I, you. With the support of the community, they slowly rebuilt their lives. As the festival approached, it was clear that Aisha, Sammy, and Tariq were the heart of the celebrations. The vibrant festival scene was filled with laughter, dance, and music. Aisha, Sammy, and a now healthy Tariq celebrated amidst the throngs, hand in hand. The story of Aisha was one of resilience, of finding light in the darkest moments, and of the love that binds and heals. The final image was that of the reunited family, under a sky full of fireworks, signifying a life full of hope and new beginnings.